explain to us what you are wearing. This right here is my good luck charm. It's Chihuahua Cruz. And take a look at that with our camera. Isaac, how do you respond to that? He's wearing a chain calling you a uh, Chihuahua, and he's wearing you on his neck. Cruz continues to walk down Romero again, launches the right hand. Left hook, Romero takes the shot, still standing. Referee intervenes. Mamma mia! Isaac Cruz has done it! What went wrong during this fight? I want to tell everybody, just thank you for coming out and uh, and honestly, happy Easter, everybody. You guys, Jesus, like Jesus was re re resurrected. I'll be back. <laughs> 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 so let's get right into one of the funniest fights of the night that <laughs> right into it yo roly got body yeah man i i don't i don't even that's a the shit beat out of him from round one all the way to the time it ended man yeah yeah he he almost got knocked out in the first. I, I think maybe he won the second, but other than that, yo, he got the shit beat out of him. And I think that might be the end, man. Uh, I I can see that being the end, but top level. Let's, right, right. And that's what I was about to say. A tier fighter, I think that might be the end for him. Unless there's somebody else that falls off, uh, I think that's where his opportunities will come. Um, so I can see him in there with Adrian Broner. Um, maybe if Ryan Garcia loses this fight and maybe another fight after that, I can see them in there with Ryan Garcia. I think his big names, you know, Roley, I think he's done getting big, big names. I think so too, man. The Maybe because he's so entertaining, he could be on some Mayorga shit where they just always use him as like a stepping stone to build their fighter and he could still, you know, make himself relevant in that way. But I don't think anyone's going to take him serious as a, a legit contender, man. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, honestly, there is one person still that I want to see it, him in there with. Right. Flair the Flair, baby. I have incredible trainers. I have incredible speed, power, intelligence, experience. Nothing can stop me. I'm ready more than ever. Nobody can stop me, baby. I'm on the way to the top, and nothing's going to stop me. Woo! Let's go. Flair the Flair against Roley. The press conference alone. Yes, yes. There we go. Nah, nah, that oh, man. Shit, man. Yeah, I would definitely like to see that, man. It, it I would, I think it would be fun, but you know, just to focus on the fight, you know, Cruz basically bodied him the entire night. Uh, he stopped him in round eight, and you know, you, now you, the you last that too. Like, let's give you some credit. You oh. called that to the round, <laughs> to the yeah. round. Yeah, yeah. Um, for me, I just, I, you know, like I said. He, Cruz just he works a lot and I didn't think Roley would be able to to really have any answers for that and he tried you see him trying to like I guess box or pick his shots and even though he had some decent shots here and there it just wasn't enough to really do anything to Cruz to get him off his game plan or discourage him or nothing it, Cruz just kept coming like the Terminator and you know it, it was a wrap Yo, we, we got to put some respect on Pitbull's fucking name, bro, because yeah. think about the way he beat Roley. He didn't lose but, like, maybe a minute of that fight. Right. <laughs> he beat yeah. him down. And when you think about the performance he had against, uh, against Tank, we really got to start putting a little more respect on Pitbull's Pitbull Cruz, Cruz's name, and not only is he exciting, but he's also skilled. He's not really just winging punches. Right. It's calculated counter punching, subtle movements, uh, super high guard and pressure fighting. But 
um it's some skill behind a lot of the stuff he does the very first hook he lands was um textbook of how roley has been getting hit right between his punches and he nearly knocked him out with the first hook man yeah super shout out to cruz man let me ask you this who, who do you think where do you think cruz goes from here well i mean like you said we got to give him credit and what i was about to say was now the landscape of 140 is is different now mm-hmm. now you have haney lopez Mati- matisse i always say his name wrong and cruz and honestly i kind of want to see cruz in there with matisse matisse mm. i, I, I want to see that i think that would be an epic match i, I think would be great now i don't know if that's good for his career but as a fan i'm trying to see that that'd be a good fight definitely like you said it's entertaining but I got to go with Cruz on that one, man. I, you know, I don't know, man. You know, you know, Cruz, he, he's a tough guy. So is Mat- Matias. I I'm, I don't know. I think it would be a great fight. I think it's Kennedy or fight of the year. They actually probably. Fight. Yeah, that, that definitely has fight of the year written all over it. The explosiveness, the constant pressure. Both yeah. fighters throw tons of punches big punches not you know I, I don't think either one of them throw jabs that would be super entertaining right there yeah who, i don't know who would back who up but uh yep i i had my doubts i had my doubts and the reason why i had my doubts is because it was 12 day notice uh his last fight was almost a year ago his last fight he got stopped so me to feel a little more confident in him i wanted to see him in there with somebody else but he got in there again 12 day notice and he 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 won he won the 12 day notice thing though i think actually favored him more than than tim zoo because you can't adjust for a guy that big at least maybe if you you know you have a camp maybe you could bring in some big fighters just to get adjusted but okay um we both had tim zoo initially initially we had tim zoo on the record when both of us yeah absolutely i went live and i recanted my statement <laughs> i took my shit back and the reason i did that was because i felt fendora being a southpaw it would be hard for Tim Zhu to land hard punches, usually a uh, uh, left-handed versus a right-handed. When it comes to your power hand, it ends up becoming more of a pouring punch and it's right. harder to land your power shots. Yeah. None of that had to do with anything last night. <laughs> it, it, it's weird. I don't know if you felt it was a robbery. I see people feeling it was a robbery i think the decision could have went either way i could have saw the draw but to me the biggest factor in the fight was a fucking cut over tim zoo's head that he actually initiated oh yeah yeah absolutely and to piggyback off that that cut changed the whole dynamic of the fight 100 percent. did you even have him losing a round prior to the cut no yeah, I mean, I uh, he got cut in, at the end of the second round, and I feel like the first, first two third. rounds, yeah, the first, was, first, the first two, yeah, he was absolutely dominant. He, he was dominant, at, yeah. And his punches, it looked like you know he was going to stop Fendora, maybe around the middle rounds, but after that cut, a whole nother fight, mm-hmm. a whole nother fight, man. How did you feel about the scorecard? I thought it was fair. Mm. Okay. And like you said, you know, like we try to tell everybody, you know, and it's not just us. You hear world champions saying the same thing. If it's a close fight and it's a split decision, you can't cry robbery. It's mm-hmm. a close fight. It's a very close fight. You know, early on, you've seen Zoo looking dominant. Once the cut happened, rounds will go in swinging either way and i think near the later end of the fight the last couple of rounds 
I kind of could see how you would probably give it to Fandola. Yeah. The, 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 definitely the later rounds. Yeah. Um, or early on, I just felt what I thought would be a problem with Tim Zhu landing punches wasn't. But the, the as you said, later on, the fight started, I guess, shifting. And at the end of the fight, man, my let's boy Eru Spence got in the ring, man. Let's, let's get to it. Let's <laughs> How get to do you it. feel about my boy just cutting in the line? <laughs> that's, that's essentially what he did. He just showed up to the fight and made it seem like he didn't lose his last fight to Terrence Crawford and said, nah, I'm next. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is a tricky situation because uh fandora <laughs> it's a debo situation is what it was <laughs> fandora just won not only the wbo but he won the vacant wbc mm. um so the belt right now that's vacant is the ibf uh charlo has the ring uh a guy named israel has the wba so you know back to earl I don't think he I don't think he's allowed to just skip the line like that. <laughs> you know, I don't but you know, and him and Terrence Crawford actually had some words. Uh I think either it was Twitter or Instagram where Terrence Crawford said, Yo, you gotta wait in line and I yes. <laughs> was just like, nah, champ, I don't do lines. So I, I I don't know, man. I I think Terrence Crawford should be the first up but you know if if negotiations don't work then you know i guess go to earl but let's think about the bigger concept of this okay is earl ready to fight that guy fendora right off the rip oh, oh i, I want to get into that but i was just wondering did you see the press conference after where they spoke to Fendora and asked them about Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford. Did you see that? No, I did not. All right, so let's go to YouTube real quick so we can check that out. Clip! <laughs> to you is the WB order. The WBO orders you to fight, to fight uh, Crawford next or you'll be stripped. Under any circumstances, will you vacate the WBO belt to fight Errol Spence? Whatever they give me, whatever they give me. Uh... Earl Spence is a great opportunity. I think it's a, 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 a match made in heaven. But Terrence Crawford is the best fighter in the world. I would like to fight him. Um, Fendora saying that he's willing to get in there with Terrence Crawford. He wants Crawford rather than Errol Spence. And I think Styles make fights, and that's actually a better fight for Fendora. I actually think if he got in there with Eru Spence, Eru Spence has enough power and, and, and skills and body. I, I think Eru Spence stops him. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. But I actually think he's got a better chance. Fendora, I think Fendora's got a better chance against Crawford. Just because of the height alone. The height alone, the work rate. Um, not skill wise. I think skill wise, no one's touching Crawford, man. But right, it, it, it's hard to be that skilled against someone that big, that relentless. And of course, um, Terrence Crawford has power, but it isn't that thudding, break you down power. It's more the sharp crispiness, and who knows with, with the bigger guy like Vendor if he's going to be able to have that same snap punching up, same way Tim Zoo didn't have it. I think it would be a, a really crazy clash of styles if it was mm -hmm. Terrence Crawford and Fendora. I'm not sure how accurate Fendora would be against Terrence Crawford. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he would land more punches against Earl because of different styles. But when it comes to Terrence Crawford, Terrence Crawford is very good on defense. And Terrence Crawford could steal rounds just by countering. Yeah. I'm not sure how it goes. Both fighters could hurt each other, obviously. If I had to bet, I'm obviously, I will bet Terrence Crawford. But I can see Fendor giving Terrence a lot of problems as well. Yeah. Now it makes sense 
why there was a split between Earl Spence and Derek James because maybe if he has to get in there at 154 who's going to be the trainer for Jamel Charlo and Earl Spence at the same time mm-hmm. so maybe he's like yo I got to step away because I got to fight my mans and yeah. I don't want my trainer to choose who he wants to pick I mean I'm not saying that's what it is but that could have played a factor you know, obviously he's making a run at 154. Charlo is still at 154. He has a ring magazine. He doesn't have, you know, any other belts, but he has a ring magazine belt. So, uh, you know, he he might feel like he still no, it wouldn't, you know, compete at 154. No, but he is also, I guess, the linear champion of that right. division. So, right. regardless of what what the titles, I mean, what the belts are, the titles or whatever, he's still the guy. Even though the I'm always real conscious about weight. My favorite fighter, Roy Jones, once he went up the heavyweight, he was no longer the same. I can't see Charlo going back down. I can't, bro. You can't go all the way up to 168 and then try to come back down. That is, and if it does, it's going to be detrimental. I don't care who he fights, he loses. That yeah, you don't care matter. who he fights. I don't care who he fights. He's gonna lose. He's gonna lose. Nah, bro. I'm telling you, to lose all that weight after thirty, it's hard. It's just hard, you know. Sure. I mean, I mean that's fair. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it could definitely, you know, not not only just be a physical aspect of behind it, but a mental. You know, I went up there to fight the best and. I didn't even do my best. I, I got dominated. Now when I come back down to my weight class, 154, I'm in I can possibly fight another great guy and it may not go my way either. So the mental could play on him. You're, you're right. And just to bring up mental, everybody tune in whenever the episode is dropped. Yes. Us, the chin checkers, and our brother John Safar did another collaboration. You know yes. what I'm saying? So you know, go to his channel, subscribe, like, share, John Savar. You know what I'm saying? We did another interview, so check that out. Yes, yes. I don't know how it played out, but it was um entertaining to do, like always, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. y'all also want to give a shout out to like one of our day one followers, um, uh Mike. You know, I saw him in the comments section, man, and it's always dope when someone appreciates your work, but this is one of our subscribers that's been with us for, man, it seems like day one. So we want to give you love, brother. Ho- hope all is well. Yeah. And, uh, th- thank you for following and for everyone else, man. Uh, slowly but surely, our progression has been moving up, man. Our followers have been going up. So, you know, it looks like the shadow ban is over because we moving <laughs> a little bit. You know? <laughs> finally getting some love out there man we appreciate y'all yeah absolutely absolutely